Flames flight attendant Luke Menton with the Royal Air Force in the UK and this is the Hawk T Mark II that we fly. And Lieutenant, uh, because that's the strange way the British pronounce Lieutenant, um, what does this airplane do for the RAF? Uh, it enables us to download training from the front line uh, in order for us to put a student to the typhoon uh, that's trained on a high quality trainer uh, and eliminates the, uh, the risk for the Air Force and saves money when we send a student to the typhoon because he's already effectively done what he's about to do, albeit on a, a training aircraft. Uh, and that's the, uh, the big advantage that this gives us, is because uh, we can train things like radar, we can train surface-to-air missile engagements on a platform which is uh, quite benign because uh, it's a training aircraft. However, the tactics are actually quite advanced. Uh, but it, because they use center simulation, uh, it's a lot cheaper for the Air Force, uh, which is obviously in these uh, current budget times uh, a big advantage as well. Can you uh, do us a favor, hop in and yeah. perhaps demonstrate? Okay, there you go. Uh, want to come in then, so, uh, just to give you an example of our sensor simulation, this is currently we have two training missiles actually on the aircraft, uh, but if I want to put a simulated weapon on, all I have to do is decide if I want an air to air weapon or an air to ground weapon. I select it. In this situation, I'm going to go for something like an AMRAM, so four AMRAMs and four SRAMs. And just simply by pressing the button, I've just changed my loadout, and now I'm going to go and fly with effectively four AMRAMs and two short range missiles. Moving on from that, then, is the, uh, the radar. So, this is the uh, a radar display. If you look into a typhoon, you'll notice that it actually looks very similar in that respect. Uh, so we'll just get our engineers to, uh, to uh, get the uh, aircraft airborne effectively and we'll put some, show you some of the uh, sensor simulation and how we put that uh, onto the, the link system which the Hawk has. And that's the, uh, the, big, uh, the big secret to this aircraft is the, the data link that the, air crew, uh, that the aircraft sorry, uh, uh, all work upon. So this is the, the link that you'll see at the moment and what I'll do now is I'll just uh, activate the virtual entities which are on our link system. So I've just put some virtual entities on now. What you'll notice is uh, here. So any aircraft, uh, which is a T2, which is on the link, will appear. These are virtual aircraft now. So if I was airborne as an instructor in the back seat, I could put those on and a student can now engage those. So this is an unfiltered link picture. But if I look at the radar now, what I can do is show you what how we use that link to make it look like a radar, albeit there's nothing in the jet except software. Well, t I'll tell you what, why don't you give us, since uh, you're a highly experienced pilot with 20 years in the air, how does this compare to the real thing? It's, it's spookily similar, to be fair. Uh, all the techniques are exactly the same. The only difference is there's no radar moving left and right in there. It's a computer generated. Uh, image of a simulating, so this is just showing a simulated sweep. Uh, again, I can move the elevation, so if I start to scan up to look up for a high level target, I'm leaving these low level targets, they'll stale out and drop out. But again, I'll just put the scanner back down. Again, looking kind of from a bird's eye view from the top, if I need to focus on something kind of target in the center here, I can narrow down my scan volume to get high updates on these. And again, it'll ignore these just like a reel. So you can see these have just gone grayed out now because the radar's lost information, just like a real radar would do. Thank you very much. No problem.